Hello and good morning guys and welcome to the first episode of the Interchange World Tour. A series in which I will be building interchanges from the real world, but also uh, fictional interchanges as we will be doing today. Today I will be recreating a City Skylines 1 interchange I built a long time ago in my city of Newport. The plan for this series is that I will talk about techniques and methods for doing this, but also showing you what is possible with the new and improved road tools in City Skylines 2. If you like the sound of that, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell icon so you don't miss the next episode. Now it's about time we get building. Okay, let's get started. Um, I have created this sort of template map that I envision we will be using for multiple episodes like to come. Um, it has this starting layout with a roundabout in the middle. I should say the map is called River Delta, it's the River Delta map. The same map as uh, New Dollarton is on, the first trailer cities. Um, and what I'm doing is I've deleted this roundabout I've uh, created temporarily just as a uh, base starting point, I guess, for, for the map. And we are going to start this interchange, which is a very complicated interchange, by making something kind of like a dumbbell interchange, I believe it's called. I had a try at making this before actually recording it, and the proportions came out all wrong. Uh, so I decided to redo it and start from the inside, start by doing the dumbbell first. And that helped a lot with getting the scale. Uh, I, yeah, as I said, I'm creating a real life interchange from City Skylines 1, and that means I'm looking at screenshots like yeah, on my other monitor, like just trying to make it as similar as possible. And I think it turned out pretty good. Um, I'm excited to talk more about it. Here you can see I'm creating the, the dumbbell roundabouts, I guess. And making roundabouts in City Skylines 2, you can either do it by just placing the ploppable roundabouts, or you can do it the same way as we did in City Skylines 1, which is dragging out roads and uh, creating custom roundabouts. And that's essentially what I'm doing here. I will be... I'll keep doing custom roundabouts for a long time, by the way, because they're just very, very useful. I really like to customize them. I like to make them unround also. And uh, the sort of almost the built in anarchy of CS2 kind of allows for so many more things that we really couldn't do, at least in vanilla City Skylines 1. Um, so the way roundabouts, like the way. Um, uh, the, the road tools work when you're creating semicircles makes making these custom roundabouts really easy. You just select one of the two, uh, the two rightmost road building options. I think it's the continuous and the complex curve. And you can drag out a perfect semicircle without really breaking any sweat. Like, and then you just do the exact same semicircle another time and you have a perfectly round roundabout. Um, which is pretty cool. Here you can see why I used those roads underneath, like we have a second level. Those roads underneath are there to make sure that that segment of road becomes a bridge. Because without them it will create a retaining wall, I found. I'm using the, I think I'm using the height step 7.5 meters to, to create the upper level here. And if I... If I just drag out the road 7.5 meters on flat ground, it seems to uh, create a um, retaining wall all the way up. So that's a pretty neat trick. Just drag out a temporary network that blocks the retaining walls from spawning and creates a actual bridge for those parts. So um, I guess one of the <laughs> one of the tricks. Actually, I didn't know about this trick before making this build. So it's like a new a new new trick for me, I guess. Uh, at this point, I should say, I've, I've played a lot of City Skylines 1 to start with, so I have a pretty good idea of, of uh, how these things work. And I've also played quite a lot of City Skylines 2 at this point also, so I'm, I'm, I'm starting to get used to it. It's, it's, not, it's not like magically easy suddenly just because the road tools are better. It makes things a lot uh, easier when, when you get the hang of it, absolutely but um, it still requires a little bit of learning and setting up to, to, to have it behave exactly the way you want it to. Um, here I'm 
connecting the first ramps to the proper highway and, um, and using those sort of snapping tools. The snapping now is, is on a lane basis instead of a segment basis, um, which makes it so much easier to do these uh, smooth transitions from like, for example, a two, a two lane segment of highway to two separate one lane segments. You can see that's almost like, it's, it's just so good. I can't get over how, how, <laughs> how easy these, uh, these things are now. And um, yeah, getting the first shapes and you can start, you can almost see it uh, starting to take shape. There are some points in this video where I, I do sort of get stuck and have to delete and go back, but it's not as bad as I honestly expected it to be. Uh, making complex stuff like this, especially if you have an idea of like how it's supposed to compare to real life or like to some picture, can take quite a lot of uh, back and forth and deleting and redoing and stuff like that. So I'm I'm pretty satisfied with how it turned out. I I will say that I do go ahead and edit out some of the footage footage near the end of the video because uh, I think my energy level got a bit uh, <laughs> I got uh, depleted and uh, when it came to making a pedestrian path that crosses over the, the interchange I kind of uh, I spent like almost as much time as uh, as building the roadways as I spent on the, that one pedestrian path so I, I, I found it, it's probably just uh, best to, to get rid of that part for now. We'll show more sort of pedestrian connections across intersections in, in future parts of this, uh, this series, I'd imagine. There's, there's plenty of that as well. Because it's not all, all about like making the best highway stuff or making the best car infrastructure. I'm really not all about that. I would like to make it and then sort of show how, how you can incorporate pedestrian aspects or uh, bike infrastructure also even though of course city skylines uh, 2 doesn't have bike infrastructure yet we can use the paths and pretend that it's bike infrastructure that's that's how i'm gonna deal with it anyway for now so yeah i'd, I'd like to do that as well um, so how do you how would you cross an interchange like this how would you how would you get uh, to the other side of a roundabout if you if we build this super like overly complex roundabout how do we how do we make it accessible and not just like limiting the uh, limiting pedestrians for uh, from accessing it or accessing the other side i suppose yeah I, I i talk a lot about that but then i end up like cutting out the footage from this one but but yeah <laughs> trust me it's not that interesting I, i'd like to keep these videos relatively speedy and and with that included it would be a more it would be almost 40 minutes uh, instead of uh, what's now something like 24 minutes so trust me it's 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 for the best <laughs> um yeah i can talk a little bit about newport the city where this is based off uh, this interchange is um come is coming from i guess newport is a city i created in city skylines one over a very long time i think starting in 2019 uh, i started building it late 2019 it's on the Bay of Plenty map. That map and that city is kind of a huge reason why I'm I'm here today, to be honest. Like, I don't know if I would <laughs> be this involved in the game if it wasn't for that, that one city. Uh, this is when I started, like, posting a lot of building uh, of City Skyline stuff. Uh, before then, I basically just played the game and I didn't care so much about it. I didn't really bother. I maybe posted a few screenshots to the Reddit, <laughs> like once every few months or something but um, it's with Newport it really started and then uh, like it's it's my most uh, I don't know most complete City Skylines one city I've ever made it's it's a really it's a really special city for me there is like uh, at least two very short videos that sort of showcase it a little bit on my channel like my two first videos ever were on that um, on that city but um, I've been waiting, I've been wanting to do at some point maybe a recap or like a, a little bit of a nostalgia trip, go back and uh, and see what else. I have some recorded footage actually from builds I did in Newport that I haven't released in like two years or so. So uh, let me know if that's something uh, I should try to get released. It might be extremely awkward in this day and age of City Skylines 2 is, uh, you know, just taking taking over everybody's attention. But yeah, I don't know. 
So you can see this interchange is progressing quite nicely. So far, everything is pretty symmetrical. Um, this part here is pretty similar to what we did on the other part. But there are there is like one ramp that does an asymmetrical thing eventually, and uh, it, it's not super easy to spot. But uh, you can uh, you can sort of challenge yourself and see if you can <laughs> see if you can see it in the thumbnail or uh, eventually when we get to it. But um, so far it's pretty symmetrical. Um, we can also talk about the rain a little bit. Yeah, I think it rained for most of this build. It's just like one of those things that's a little bit unfortunate. You can't really turn off the rain, as far as I know yet, anyway. Uh, so, when it rains, make make uh, interchange videos, I guess, or something. <laughs> it's it's raining now, and there's not a lot I can do about it other than waiting. And I'm I'm kind of uh, fed up with waiting for for the climate in this game. Um, I waited so long for the last video, the the completion of Lake Lakewood. I was about to say Lake. Uh, Lakeland. I completely forgot the name of the map and the city. Um, by the way, that that video kind of uh, blew me away. The reception. I I, I did had no. I did not expect it to be quite that popular, but you guys seem to like it, and it, it makes me happy to uh, <laughs> to uh, to read all the nice comments about it. Uh, I mean, I think it's sort of a very uh, valid thing to like we we might go back and just improve lake land like fix it and just complete it maybe just keep building i think that's some some really cool ideas we could do um there's a lot of stuff i never really added to it like i never did districts i never did uh buses even like i never even did buses um Buses are a little bit my Achilles heel in this game. I always want to do them, I just never really get around to it. But So that could be fun, like giving it districts and buses and improving services, adding like detailed areas, I guess. But um, yeah, the reception of that video blew me away. I, by this by this point in time, I think it might be the most, the most viewed video ever on this channel and it's kind of incredible. But a lot of that, I'm, I'm trying to not let it get to my head. Like this is... Obviously, you guys just want to see City Skylines 2, or like you want to figure out more about it. Like it's a very, it's a very sort of uh, uh, hypey period, I guess. So it's like it's not really it's not really about the city, is it? It's it's more about just showing the game. And um, I, I'm excited to do either. I, I think it's I think you guys deserve to like see a lots of different variations. So like, what is possible in this game? Um, instead of just hearing like I guess the technical stuff before buying like it's that, that's that's my idea anyway like that's what I want to contribute like this is this is what I think is possible this is what I would do with my ideas and like this is like it, inspire you to get your own sort of uh, your own ideas for what you want to build I guess yeah and here you can see actually that yeah, I'm gonna spoil it. That's this is the the asymmetrical part of it. Um, <laughs> it's not it's hardly asymmetrical, but there, there are some ramps that are differently configured and do a little bit of a different thing uh, compared to the other side. And you can see there's like there's almost like no <laughs> limits when it comes to connecting roads to a highway or like these ramps to a highway. It's I made a video on that a long time ago on uh, In City Skylines 1, like I found a vanilla trick that lets you uh, connect things at a sharper angle, like all of that, all of that stuff is completely just uh, irrelevant in this game, you don't, there is no limitation in angle when you're connecting a, a road to a highway, in fact, I think you can do zero degree, uh, zero degrees between roads is a possibility now. Possibly even less, but I haven't really looked into it. And uh, like these smooth connections from like free, a three lane highway to a, a two plus one uh, lane highway networks. <sighs> yeah, it's it's really nice. <laughs> I really appreciate it. And here you can see me starting to do these smaller loops. And actually there's a little bit of a fun thing that happens there. You can see how it connects, it actually snaps and connects the networks, 
even though it doesn't connect any lanes. So the road, uh, the road segments actually connect, but they uh, they don't form any lane connections. I thought that was kind of funny, and I thought a moment about keeping it, but then I realized uh, I can get it to uh, to start sort of uh, going down. I can I can get the slope better if I just uh, don't do that. So, but uh, like just shows how these. Uh, these options are very powerful in this game. Uh, I have to redo these ramps a few times just to make them look uh, neat enough, I guess. It's not necessary. It's pretty easy uh, to get them to work. But I found like a few a few times, like redoing them a few times usually gives me the best result. So uh, the roundabouts are almost, are almost always perfect on the first try. Uh, with that semicircle, uh, I guess how the semicircles work, but uh, these loop ramps, I usually have to try them a few times before I'm satisfied. Yeah, and you can see these, oh, that that connection just like it lets you do anything. It's it's almost it's almost too good. Um, uh, I feel like I don't deserve I don't deserve to create these these connections. But here we are anyway. Sometimes you do get a little bit of height sort of uh, weirdness and I found that upgrading the road and downgrading it um, sometimes helps or just upgrading it or like touching it with some thing. But sometimes also just um, redragging it, deleting the segments that are weird and redragging them is the solution. And that was the solution there. Um, the snapping, the snapping options I can talk so much about. I'm pretty advanced. I At this point, I'm using the snapping options pretty uh, uh, liberally and all the time. Uh, the snapping options will be the, the largest hurdle, I think, for, for building highways in this game. Because there are so many of them. It basically lets you do almost anything you want to. You just need to know which which settings to disable and to, to uh, enable. Uh, City Skylines uh, 2 is is less of a game where you draw out a grid uh, and like sort of count the steps when you make interchanges. It is, I think by nature, like it's much more free-flowing the way uh, you have to do it and like eyeballing it. But the all the different guidelines and everything makes eyeballing just much more uh, convenient and, and like it feels so much easier and better. But uh, that's something to keep in mind. Like, I, I recommend you to just play around with all the snapping options and as much as you can. And also the the road, the tool mode, uh, which are the the road, um, which is basically the continuous curve, the complex curve, the simple curve. Play around with them all and just test uh, which ones work best in in which situation. I tend to use. Uh, I mean, I sometimes use the straight one when I need to have a straight segment. I want to make sure it's straight. But I tend to use the, the continuous one, which, which is the one I enabled right now for the most part. I sometimes switch to the simple curve, which is the second from the left, uh, when I need to just connect between two set guidelines. I have like two uh, perfectly... Um, yeah. It basically acts in a similar way as the, the curve mode in City Skylines 1 did, the normal curve mode. There was only one curve mode, I should say. But um, the complex curve, I don't really use that much. I tend to use the continuous curve more. I think it's similar. I think it does pretty much the same thing. Uh, but it lets you continue from where you end. So, and I don't know. Maybe this will change. <laughs> but uh, that's that's how I do it for now anyway. And you can see it's pretty close to actually being uh, completed, or at least the the roads already. I should say that this interchange took a very long time to build in City Skylands One. It's not very—it's very hard for me to estimate the time because I built it over a long period of time and added things as I went along. I had a proto version of this interchange already on the map, on the Bay of Plenty map, but. I edited it in a first round, and then I actually added the 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 dumbbell 
portion of it in the middle as a later edition uh, a few weeks or maybe even months after so it's a little bit um, <laughs> it's a little bit complicated to see say how long it, it took to build and here i'm actually using the parallel tool which i I've, I've already said that i don't like to use a parallel tool and and i think it has its really has its benefits if you if you're sort of consistently using the same offset uh, but it becomes a bit tricky when uh, when you like have different um, when you have different offsets and you need to sort of adjust for that all the time but i think i think a lot of people will will like the parallel tool to be honest and it's it's pretty good um, to the point that even i even i the old dog that can't learn new tricks i started uh, using it so yeah Just delete the tree. I did go ahead and actually try to plant trees and bushes around this interchange, but then I also realized that would require me to wait a, a really long time for the bushes to grow up for it to look good. And I decided, like, you know what? Not. I don't really have the time now anyway. That's not going to be worth it. I think. Um, We'll, we'll save that stuff for the proper city builds where like the proper detailed builds but here it's it's pretty much like still at this point just a proof of concept can we do these kinds of builds in city scalons 2 can we do these these kinds of uh, can i do these kinds of videos like in a in a convenient and efficient way and like is it going to be good to watch fun to watch and stuff like that so here I, i'm doing the lazy way for ed terrain anything i'm i'm just uh, bringing the terrain up to match the road i'm making the topography respect me instead of respecting the topography you could say which is kind of a kind of kind of hilarious and not the way you're supposed to do it but it just makes it fit into the surrounding a little bit better um the original interchange was built on quite a terrain difference so that was it's a little bit fair unfair to compare them but this is pretty much the end of the video, by the way, guys. Um, if you liked this episode, please like and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss the next part of this series or the next content, I guess. And uh, enjoy the cinematics. I'll see you next time.